Thank you all for uh, staying in. Um, you've had some 60 slides already, so I'm very uh, pleased that you still look very attentive and committed to listen. Um, my name is Pauline Bongers. I'm uh, also professor in work and health at the VU, in v VU University. I'm a director of science of the unit Healthy Living at TNO. And I ask you to first, we heard some things about uh, the global standards for uh, sustainability and health, and later a very engaged talk, to, a talk about engagement of workers. And then we made it a little bit more personal and small to go to the cancer patient. And now we enlarge again to work and health and well being, and also a little bit to the future. So um, I'm aware that talking about the future is quite dangerous. I'm sure you have seen some of these quotes about how wrong you can be about the future. And in particular, the last one, I saw interviews on Dutch streets in 1999 asking people whether they thought they would have need or use for a mobile phone. And most of them were convinced, no way. And this student said, oh, you just imagine that I will be called on my bike. I, would not be, I wouldn't like to think of that. And now you, they, they talk on the phone all the time, the students. So talking about the future is not easy. Also, the future of work is really not easy. Jobs will come and jobs will go. And that has been quite during history. Uh, uh, it, that has been so. And actually, more job has had come uh, than, than that jobs had gone. But we hope that now in this future that will also be the case and nobody knows. Some people say different trends will reduce jobs, but uh, uh, I'm not going to predict the future. It's better to prepare for the future. And if you want to prepare for the future, the main thing that you should do is take time and be systematic about it. And for instance, for your company or your sector or your region, you can focus on what do you think are the main drivers of change in the future. And if you discuss with them, at least you have some dialogue on ideas and visions, and you have some uh, uh, general idea about what might be uh, uh, focusing in the future for your company or your... Uh, so, so that is important to do. Um, and then you can make scenarios if you are really uh, focusing on that. But you can also try to have some ideas about different, uh, 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 different futures and what is really essential that you should be prepared for that. And, and I'm not going to do that in general because it needs specific, specificity and not uh, to, if you do it in general, it's too generic. But it's something you can really... I think it's important to take to take a time to do so. Um, I have, of course, listed some general trends that we focus, and many of them, you know, I think uh, technology is by far the most disruptive uh, driver, uh, and uh, of course, automation and di digitization is going on already, and it will move into different areas. For instance, in, in healthcare, specialist uh, operational care, uh, it will go into uh, advocacy, the, the whole. So there will be jobs that will be digitized to some extent, uh, and but others will come and go. So some trends I would like to emphasize, um, how I have to change here too, what am I, I see now. I have to look, <laughs> my computer here is not moving, but okay, I'll look at the, the hair. And some of the, the, the trends uh, is that, of course, uh, uh, there is a large increasing need for uh, highly educated and less need for the uh, middle educated, which move into the lower educated jobs. So you will have a digital divide and there is discrepancy be be uh, in the labor markets, what is asked uh, and what is delivered. So, so we have as a society have to make sure that we 
moving to a more to an inclusive society and that the digital divide is not dividing groups of workers too much and of course we have a uh, faster movement of changes we have customization of production which makes it uh, even if it's the same production makes it different differential uh, we have an increase of night work again because of uh, a tomorrow a today uh, order tomorrow delivered we have high mental demands particularly in the netherlands uh, and of course all these uh, digitization automation also gives a lot of opportunities in the future of work also to keep your people uh, healthy and and uh, the well-being high um, if i zoom in a little bit about the, the mental health trends in the Netherlands, uh, one out of seven is uh, focusing uh, work-related uh, mental health issues, burnout complaints, and a large part of our Dutch uh, sickness absence, more than one third is on mental health issues, and it's actually the largest, almost half of all permanent disability nowadays. Um, but, and it has, it is still increasing from uh, 2012 to 2015, but uh, there is a lot of attention in, in HR world, and a lot of companies now have, uh, uh, um, uh, how do you call it, plans to, to tackle the issues. Um, I have to go a little bit faster, I'll, I'll, otherwise I'll be the first that run out of time, runs out of time. Um, what, um, what I think is very important for the f in the future for the well-being of workers is that you continually see, continuously keep track of the fit between the worker and the job. If you start a job, there is quite a good fit between your skills and abilities that you have and that is needed, and between the values you, ha you have and the values that are part of, of, of the job, which, which uh, brings your values closer uh, to, to reality. But if you move on in, in, in lifetime previously, but now in shorter cycles, this person job fit will uh, uh, be larger, and that, I think, is one of the main drivers of employee uh, well-being, in this case, of, of uh, less employee well-being. If there is not a good fit between skills, abilities, what is delivered and what is asked, and between motivations and values that you have and that are asked. So, and we have different routes that makes this job fit uh, uh, barrier and uh, also so the remedy can grow through different uh, aspects and we at TNO, TNO think that important parts of that are the health and vitality route which we heard a bit about of course for in the Heineken and other uh, previous talks as uh, the development and the skills route and the redesign of the job. These are three main uh, focus areas where you can put your effort in to continuously moderate this job person fit. And of course the person, him and herself, is also part of it and has to uh, uh, work on, on the sustainable employment. But you can only do that if you have an idea about where your work is going, and where your values are going, and that you have also a perspective on, 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 in, on time and continuation of elements of a person that help uh, for doing this is that you have an internal locus of control that you think that you can actually have influence on the future and on your circumstances that you have uh, higher self-efficacy which is very well trained to, to be able to you can train that very well so that you believe that you can do things and acqu uh, acquire things and that you have support of your uh, team and your uh, manager, which of course like uh, uh, was very well focused on on Cisco, it's very important, and that you have a well perceived health, which doesn't mean that you have to be healthy, but that you think it can deal with your health, and that you think that the gap between your qualifications that are needed in the job and that you think you can do are is not too large. There's those elements scientifically. Uh, supported are very important on the on the person side, and also important if you look at these routes to 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 so be sure that you have a very well fit during the lifetime. 
I will uh, show you some examples uh, of uh, solutions that are evidence-based uh, in the in these for these different routes. Um, and I hope I can address them all, and otherwise I skip one or two. Um, first, I, um, before I go to the specific uh, example of the health and vitality route and the skills uh, development route and the G redesign route, I will say something about where you can find, of course there is so much out there, also uh, later in the network uh, room, uh, but it's hard for HR, I think, to judge what is working for whom and how much evidence is there about what is working for whom. And this is the uh, well-being tree and that is an effort from European experts to uh, structure all the knowledge about employability and health and well-being. It's um, on the website up there and I hope I didn't check whether it's working. It's it will be soon on the website of the HSE, which is the Health and Safety Executive in the UK, which, who are working on it. And this is a way to structure uh, individual, environment, organization, societal issues, determinants of health and well-being, and the effect combination as all, the, all these factors has on these outcomes, which are uh, uh, fruits on the tree. So, so you can have a look, it's interactive. For the Dutch situation, there is also a platform which will soon be online. This was a, a Zon and Way scientific study to uh, combine all the scientific knowledge uh, and make it available for practice. And it's called Stress Prevention and Work. It focuses on work, mental health and stress. And it's a stepwise wise approach that uh, hands you tools for diagnosis, what are the issues that my company helps you to prioritize, and if you have uh, uh, with the knowledge about the importance of certain issues, and if you've done so, it helps you choose interventions, at least interventions that are validated and are uh, uh, which have data on effectiveness in uh, in the literature. So it's it's an attempt to also for the Dutch situation uh, make all the scientific evidence available for practice. And the guy who's done it will have its PhD ceremony soon. Um, I go over this a little bit quick because it's quite fundamental. Um, but it, I'm now going into the examples of the health route. What can you do for, for increasing vitality? And of course, there's a lot. Um, what I will do is give you a little preview of what it might be in the future. Not so much the future of work, but it might be the future of how you deal with these increasing of vitality. And this is what we're working on it doesn't want to stay here apparently, is on the exposome. And the exposome is the counterpart of the genome. And the, the, the genome is all your heredit, her, uh, your uh, genetic material. But the exposome is all the exposure that is uh, uh, during lifetime uh, part of you and your, the way you lived. And we think that in the future, we might also all manage our own exposome and keep track of all the influences and have our own data and are, uh, uh, be able to, to guide your own well-being and, and, and health with uh, part of that with your own data. And then you have, of course, such a job coach and a part. Little bits of this are already there. Of course, not the total lifetime exposure idea, but then you have your genetic information, your uh, all your measurements that you can have uh, m more and more with easy to access uh, sensors, and then you will see what for you would help to keep yourself fit and fit for the job. Uh, just a short introduction, this is that you have uh, more information about how you react to all these informations because we're all different. I know in, in cancer treatment, it's there is notes. Of course, all the cancers are very different, but even within the same cancer treatment, you have already so many 
personalized treatments because we all have different mutagens and, and that of course goes for prevention also. We get personalized prevention more and more. Um, an example of uh, something that's going a little bit to this whole integrated uh, intervention where you can combine your own uh, personal biosystem with genetics, with information from outside is a stress prevention tool we've developed for higher management where we had all these elements, uh, genetics, which uh, biomarkers uh, by blood sample, etc. Some uh, cortisol, which says something about stress in the hair, uh, digitized questionnaires every now and then. And then, of course, the issue is if you have all the data, how do you make sense of it? And that, of course, will be an effort which will go on in the future and will we have learning systems etc to do something with, with it but of course you can on all these elements give some feedback and we've tried also to combine them and are learning together with the people who are doing this uh, to to see how you can make sensible interpretations we've are doing something also for the night workers because night work can be uh, uh, of course, disrupting uh, uh, health and well-being a little bit on the short time basis, particularly sleep patterns, etc. Uh, but it can also uh, have long-term effects. And that is also uh, a combination about work, work organization, about support, about personal coping, but also about, about your bias system, your circuit that's a difficult word in English, circadian, etc., uh, rhythms. And also for these, uh, these uh, night workers, we're trying to get a, a simple tool with advices on when to be in the light, when to be active, what to eat, and which schedules would fit you best, and how to have communication tools to discuss that with your partners, etc., um, which is much more individualized. And uh, we're, we're setting on this track and we're trying to do this, but it already we have for the food, of course, we have uh, an app which says if you're in the night shift and if you uh, have questions about eating and sleeping, what would be the advice, for instance, when to eat carbohydrates, when to eat light meals, etc., etc. So I think we think that there is a lot to do to support people uh, in the night shift with a, a very complete vision on both biosystems, uh, coping, behavior, and, and organization. And I, we think that the future will be much more of this. Um, so now I had talked about these health routes and how they might look like in the future. And then to go over to the, what can you do with the skills? Because we think that sustainable employment and well-being is, is not only health and fitness, it, it's very much your idea about how, how capable you are in your job and how your job matches the values that are important for you. And we know that everyone's, everyone says we have to uh, learn continuous, continuously, lifelong learning, but it's very difficult to, to really get it working. And, and our analysis is, is that it is because it needs direction. You can't ask from a population that they have to work, that, that the individual workers that they have to do, uh, be, uh, uh, how do you call it, responsible for their lifelong learning. Of course they are to some extent but you have to give direction. Where is it going with your company, with the companies? If you're in a shrinking sector, then you better prepare your workers that their work might not be there uh, in the next 10 years. And so they need to be prepared for other work, but then they need guidance, direction in what to do. And we've tried to uh, uh, get that concept in so that we may give it uh, hands and feet. And uh, we called it Taken van de Toekomst, uh, the tasks of the future so that you can prepare as an individual, as a company, as a region for the tasks 
that might come in the future, at least we together think that might be there in the future. And it's a uh, uh, supporting tool, digital tool, and what it does actually is look very systematically about what everyone is doing in tasks, whether they think, um, uh, yeah, first it's about the job analysis now, what are they doing in the task, and uh, what uh, do they, uh, the workers as well as the managers think about these tasks for the future? So if we have mapped the tasks of today together with the workers, we will have sessions with the managers or the workers both, whether they think these tasks will change in the future and whether will they become larger, smaller in quantity, quality, different, etc. And then, of course, we have a, a, a uh, uh, outside world view also, which technology is used in the company, where does it go, what are the front runner companies in your sector, where, where are they going, so what's going on outside, what's going on inside, and how will that affect the demand side of the tasks that, that are needed. And then you have a picture of what you think the future task might be, and then again, all the workers are mapping uh, their task, uh, uh, the future task, and see whether they have skills to do them, whether they would like to do them, and, um, and whether they think they have something to offer. And so then you end up with this, uh, the tasks, task for which you are neither qualified nor motivated, so you had these are the are the, the yellow task, and then you have the, the, the purple task, which you are uh, motivated but not yet qualified. So and then you have task for which the people think that they're qualified but not motivated, etc. So you can have a mapping of the future tasks of the company and the, and what the workers think about how they match with the future. And then of course you can have an action plan that if you know sort of as an individual, but also as a company, uh, what task you think you will have in the future and what the workers will be able to offer, which they were they qualified and motivated. So the workers can have an, a, a, their uh, individual plan, uh, the task they don't like, they're not motivated and not qualified, they should sort of get rid of. And the task they're motivated but not qualified, then they have a, a, a development plan, which to learn, schooling, etc. Uh, and um, so, so that uh, makes it into an, uh, an action plan if you have tasks that you are qualified for but, but not motivated. You should, as a company, see how come, what's wrong, what can we do about it, that there is also motivation, etc. So then you have that on an individual action plan for these tasks for the future, but as a company you can combine all that and then you know sort of with this workforce I will in the future have no one who will be qualified or schooling will not help to, to deal with those tasks, etc, etc. So you can have a complete picture. And of course it might not all be accurate for the future, but it gives a lot of guidance if you have this whole exercise in where to prepare and where are the where are we sensitive and, and what can we deal with. So that's a way to look at the, at the future. So, so, and actually, for instance, Amsterdam has a very nice House of Skills program, I don't know if you've heard of it, which is part, uh, the Taka van de Toekomst is part of that, but then on a regional focus. So where we have shrinking bank employees, what are the tasks they are qualified for, what are the tasks they're motivated for, and are the demand tasks in other sectors and regions may be quite similar. Although in functions they're quite different, there might be matchings in tasks. So, and then we like to see if we can have a labor uh, exchange in, 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 in uh, the, the uh, demand for tasks and not for jobs, and also have an overview of av availability of the potential task that the workforce that is in the region can actually do with some schooling, extra motivational uh, trajectories, etc. 
So on a regional basis, uh, we called it a paskamer, or maybe it's now it, it's a different job uh, name now, but that is matching on tasks on a, a labor market. And I think that's very interesting. Um, what, uh, what about time? Still, still okay? All right. Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, then, then uh, of course, we talked about these health and development uh, trajectories in order to get a better match again between person and job. But of course, you can also do something about it, the jobs. And I, I think that should be emphasized. It's not only the worker that has to fit in the jobs or the tasks, but of course, the jobs have to fit the worker, and there's a lot to do there also in the future with job crafting and uh, with uh, preparation of, of thinking about the jobs in the future that would really be difficult for, for instance, an aging workforce, etc. So, so that is the jo job redesign route, I think, that needs also enough uh, attention. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.